It's all about dreams, you know. And by the way, dreams cost nothing; they're free.、Uh, the hard part is just keeping them going. And please keep them going because we're here for one simple reason: he believed in the dream, I believed in the dream, and our dreams come true. And there's no reason every one of yours can't either. I. I used to sit in this little apartment, and it was a room. As a matter of fact, the room was so small. I remember I was able to open up the window and close the door while sitting on the bed at the same time. It was like eight feet by eight feet by nine feet. And but the one thing about that room, there was really very little distraction. So I would sit there, propped up in bed, and I'd go out with my big pen and and legal pad and just start writing these these stories. And and most of them were were, were very very trivial, but. There was something about the process of unrealized dreams. I was always brought back to this subject because I think it's one of the most enduring subjects and one of the most difficult passages for people to accept that they never were realized in their own lifetime. That they just didn't get that shot. I decided it was a time to come to California. So I went to California. And I moved in the valley, and things weren't going very, very well there. As a matter of fact, I had to go out and try to sell my dog because he was either、uh, do that or or、uh, he just was not going to be very well fed. And then one night, I went to see、uh, Muhammad Ali fight. For one brief moment, this supposed stumble bump turned out to be magnificent in the fact that he lasted and knocked the champion down. I said, "Boy, this isn't a metaphor for life. His entire life crystallized at that moment. He will be remembered for all eternity, at least in,、uh, in, among the fight fans. He did something extraordinary." I said, "Now that—that that is probably what I need as a catalyst for an idea. A man who's going to stand up to life and take one shot and maybe go the distance." So I started to write, and it was one of those writing frenzies. And three days later. I came up with the script of Rocky. Now, the script, by no means, was a finished piece of material. It was probably about 90 pages, and maybe 10% of it remained in the final script. But it was done. I first met、uh, Bob Shardoff and Erwin Winkler, and I believe I was there on on a, a, a casting call. So we're talking a little bit, and I guess I really wasn't right for the acting part. And on the way out. I said, "Oh, I don't know if it matters, but I do a little bit of writing." He goes, "Really?" He says, he says "Yeah, I, I'm writing this, this story. This、uh, I have this thing about wrestlers, and I might do something about boxing." Well, he says, "Well, bring it around." And I thought, if I hadn't stopped on the way out, you know, that's why I tell all actors or writers, don't give up. Keep talking. Eventually, you might hit a nerve somewhere, and they go, "Ah, come on back." And if they didn't say, "Come on back." Or bring it later, and let's see what you've developed. I wouldn't be sitting here, so I have to give incredible credit to their、uh, to their insight and their patience, and they're willing to take a chance, which、um, it doesn't exist much anymore, unfortunately. Originally, when I brought the script to them. They were fairly enthusiastic about it. The one thing they were not enthusiastic about was me playing the part, and, and I really can't blame them at the time. But there was something inside of me that that you know this opportunity is never going to come around, and I really wasn't used to money, and I had no idea of what I would be missing. But the temptation started to come forward. First, it was. Uh, Twenty-five grand and a hundred thousand dollars. I never heard of a hundred thousand because I had had like a hundred six dollars in the bank, and like I said, I had to sell my dog, and things were not looking very, very good.、Uh, my forty-dollar car had just blown up, so I was taking a bus to work, and but still, it, it didn't matter. I wanted to stick with it. Then it went up to one hundred fifty thousand, one hundred seventy-five thousand, and went up to two hundred fifty thousand. Now my head was starting to spin, and it went up to three hundred thirty thousand. And probably I heard it went up to three hundred sixty thousand, and I thought, all right, you know, you've really managed poverty very well. You've got this down to a science. You really don't need much to live on. I had, I had like sort of figured it out. So I was not、um, in in any way、uh, 
I used to, uh, to the good life. So I thought, you know what? If I, I know in the back of my mind, if I sell the script and it does very, very well, I'm going to jump off the building. And if I'm not in it. So this is one of those things where you just roll the dice and you...